Alright, this is the last video of the Piscona Productions SVB commentary that will be done episode by episode basis. From now on I'm going to release them season by season just because it's a lot easier. So from now on when we do commentaries instead of clicking, you know, watch this episode and watch the commentary of this episode, I'll just have like a commentary for all five episodes of the season or all six or whatever there is and you'll watch the commentary for the whole season. I'll just edit all the videos together. So that way it, it'll just be a lot quicker, I'll have a lot less uploads and it'll just be easier for everybody. Plus those who really care can watch it all at once rather than watching episode by episode. It's kind of a pain in the ass, you know, so. But yeah. This episode was vastly different from the original. Um, the original was, it didn't have this big of a talk scene in the beginning. That and uh, when they unthawed John from cryosleep, he was just in like a sock or something. And in this I actually made a cryo like casket with glass and everything uh, for him just because, you know, I wanted it to look really legit. and. Uh, that and there's there's a lot of dialogue in here that I purposely put in here uh, this time around to set up for the prequel a little bit and um, yeah but uh, yeah there's a lot of little hints at uh, stuff that happened before the you know first season and before the second season you know before everything so and yeah but I made his uh, cryo thing out of like a uh, a little piece of a mattress bedding so that's what he's laying on and a Nintendo DS box and some tin foil and some electric tape but uh yeah you could actually see the Nintendo DS stuff inside I thought that was kind of funny but yeah it, it took a while it uh, it's in the behind the scenes video that I'm gonna release someday it took a while to uh, release or to get together to look good especially with that glass like view uh, you know, where you could actually see him in there. But in the prequel, there's actually a reason why he's in there. He's not just frozen for no reason. So yeah, that'll be clarified when I eventually make the prequel. Um, I always intended to explain that even in the original, but I just never got around to it. And then one day I decided, hey, I'm going to make a prequel. So, you know, why not just explain it in that? But yeah, um, I thought the satellite images looked a lot better this time around. They weren't just, like, pictures. I didn't even edit them last time around. This time they actually have that phosphorus, like, green thing going on. Uh, you know, like you're looking through, like, a TV or something. And he's actually in a cage this time. He's not uh, in a hamper. <laughs> in the original, Ryan was being held prisoner in a, camp in a hamper. Another thing I like is that... Uh, in the original, they were like, yeah, it's heavily guarded, and then you just see, like, two brutes guarding him. And I was like, why did I say that? So in this new version, they, they literally bring that up. They're like, wait, if it's so heavily guarded, why are there only two brutes? This doesn't seem that hard. And they're like, you know, I didn't think about that. <laughs> so, yeah, that was kind of a nod to the old episode. But, uh, yeah. Um... Some of John's dialogue was changed a little bit because I wanted to make him into a little bit more of a serious character. Uh, he's kind of like more like the voice of reason rather than just a mindless, you know, yeah, yeah, type guy. Yeah, he's he's not like that. He's he actually has a purpose and more of a character now this time around. Um, yeah, and. Uh, The rest of this so far is pretty much the same as the original episode. Um, that was different, uh, the whole him grabbing a sniper rifle, because I never even showed that in the original, but yeah. So now it actually makes sense when he gives him the sniper rifle, the yeah, sniper rifle, because he took it with him, but this part where they're talking about, yeah, the jelly and the banana, that was actually improv from Ilaf the second time around uh, when I when we did lines for the reanimation. Um, I thought the acting was much better in this version. I was really impressed with everyone's acting, including my own, not to sound stuck up, but the acting was just way, way better than the original. I mean, it's still, you know, it's still just a series on YouTube, but 
I mean, the acting is ridiculously better than the original. Um, but yeah, going back to that jelly, or this is the jelly, you know, that conversation, they're having that same conversation right now, except they're talking about a different situation. So they did the same thing in a different situation. If you listen really closely, they're saying the same thing, though. It's really funny. I, only a few people actually caught that. But I thought it was funny how I added the... Uh, there was more of an inter interaction between Ryan and the Brute this time. He, the Brute comes up to the cage, and he's like, you know, Hey, boy. And he's like, uh, hi. And then it kind of, like coaxed the brute into coming in and he was like oh shit you know I thought that was way better than the brute just being in there the, the scene just turned out way better especially with uh, an accident right here if you look the brute's hand actually accidentally gets caught on the cage his right hand and it looks like he's using it as leverage it looked really good and I accidentally did it it was really funny so it looks like he's like grabbing the cage to pull himself onto Ryan. It's really disgusting, but yeah, this this scene in the original he wasn't masturbating. He was just like kind of touching himself. But this time I decided to go a little over the top. I wanted to make it just completely disturbing. I even added in little noise that I made with my mouth, and it just ended up being completely over the top, and I loved it. And then. His interaction with Travis was a lot more, like, genuine, I, I thought. Uh, he, like, they just acted a lot better. Their chemistry was a lot better this time um, between me and Brandon, because Brandon plays Travis. Uh, just the, for one, I, you know, I'm not playing his voice, both of their voices, but uh, two, it's just... I, we just spent a, more time on it, but, yeah, um, this part, um, the only thing that's different about this is that after the bears get killed, you actually get to see the blood and everything everywhere. Last time, uh, in the original, uh, version of the episode, before we reanimated it, um, Nick was just like, yeah, I had to deal with a group of bears, and you never get to see what happened to him. You just assume he killed them. But in this, I just added, you know, he was like, yeah. He goes, yeah, yeah they're dead. And then it just, like, cuts to a picture of them brutally slaughtered, and just thought that was kind of funny. But, yeah. A lot of people always ask me who I based the voice off of for the rooster, and, oh, wait, I love this. <laughs> just that. Just that surprised look on the vulture, but uh, this part is funny because if you listen, all the animals make some kind of noise. That plasma grenade took a lot to do, too. Oh, this part where Jesse says, oh, I already had breakfast, that's making fun of Battle Los Angeles because I thought that movie was terribly corny. That's just me. I don't hold it against anyone who likes it, but at the end when they're like, we already had breakfast. Well, I wanted to make fun of that, and Jesse pulls out this really corny line, and he was like, yeah, I already had breakfast, <laughs> and John's like, well, you're an idiot. So, just thought that was funny, but um, this scene was filmed a lot better. Uh, in the original, it was composed of, like, two shots, and I just edited it to where it worked, but this time I actually, like, the whole time he's talking to the ostrich, the ostrich actually moves and, like, looks like he's, like, trying to understand him, and he's like, uh, uh. and then, like, he's like, how do you respond to this? And he's just like, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Also, the ostrich actually, like, gets killed this time. Like, in the original episode 10, he just, like, he very quickly gets killed and you don't see who kills him. I don't know why I did that, but in this one, John just kills the shit out of him. He actually double taps him, as you just saw. But, yeah, um, all those, uh, getting back to those animals, uh, during that shotgun scene with John, if you listen, they all are actually making real-life animal noises that they make, like the turkey is going, gong, 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 and then just get blown away, and I thought that was kind of funny, but... Because I wanted to make them just ridiculously cute, because I, uh, I wanted to really instill the, you know, super soldiers versus cute little animals feel, and that really helped out, and I think I'm going to use that again in the future. 
but uh, getting back to who the ostrich's voice is based on, uh, I based it off of Triumph the Insult Comedy Dog be just because I thought I think he's funny as hell and I used to love him when I was in high school and he kind of fell off the map recently. Well, not recently, a couple of years ago. I haven't heard from him in forever, but uh, just kind of like a little nod to him. I really like Triumph. But as you notice, the credits changed back. Um, they use just a regular font now. And like I was saying in the other uh, uh, commentary, I did that just to make it look more professional. And I use Halo music for a lot of the credits now because I'm trying to get rid of the uh, copyright issues, but yeah.